So what we're going to do here is to check the ignition timing on a 1936 Rolls-Royce 2530 which still has the uh, manual points uh, type ignition system. Um, to cut time on the video I've done some preparations in advance and those preparations are uh, to remove all of the spark plugs. Uh, I've also removed the distributor cap and the rotor arm and I've um, set the points gap to uh, just under 18 thou the book says between 15 and uh, 18 thou uh, and I've used the advanced and retired uh, manual control on the steering column in order to set the cam here uh, to um, so it coincides with the lobe on the cam uh, and then use the um, adjusting screw and locking nut here on the static uh, set of points uh, to give me a gap of just under 18 thou on, on the points. Uh, the other thing that I've done is to make sure that the um, rotor arm, when it's on, is pointing at number one cylinder. So uh, when we put the distributor cap back again, um, this lead goes up to uh, number one cylinder there, so I know that the, um, the rotor arm is just about to fire onto number one cylinder. The other preparations that I've made uh, is that I've jacked up one wheel, and I've done that in order to be able to turn the engine over. Um, you cannot use the starting handle to turn the engine over in this particular instance um, because the starting handle drives through uh, the flexible drive mechanism um, and that's explained fully in the Rolls-Royce owner's manual so the, the engine has to be turned from the flywheel side. Now inside the car the preparations that I've made inside are to uh, disconnect the battery and I've removed the floorboard and I've also removed the flywheel cover housing which you can see removed here. Um, I've then, uh, because this is my um, dip switch here, I've wrapped that up in insulation um, in order to reconnect the battery again. Uh, <coughs> I've then put the car into uh, fourth gear and with my wheel jacked up I've turned the road wheel um, in the direction um, uh, of travel if we were moving forward uh, and what I'm looking for here is a mark on the flywheel that says um, BAI so I'm looking for a mark um, that says that with a timing mark on it it's battery advanced ignition now that marker tells me um, at that point on the flywheel I should be sending a spark to number one cylinder uh, when the advanced retired mechanism on the steering wheel is set to maximum advance. <coughs> now it helps, it really helps if you have two people here. Uh, I didn't, so I, um, I've done this on my own, but um, you can't see the timing mark here uh, very clearly because uh, it, BAE is actually right behind the mark on there, but you can just about see uh, there's, a, there's a timing mark there. I'm getting a bit closer. There is a timing mark just there, and the stamp BA1, BAI, is just behind the mark here. Okay. Now, at that point, when um, my control on the, the quadrant on the steering column is set to fully advanced, I should be feeding a spark to number one cylinder, which means the points should be opening at ex that exact point. Now, <coughs> when the points open, so with the points closed, I would normally be uh, having current flowing through the coil. Uh, there'd be a magnetic field around the coil, which is storing the energy. The second the points open, that field collapses, uh, creates um, a very strong electromagnetic induced current which flows to the distributor and is then fed to number one cylinder. So I'm looking for the point when the points open. 
Now that can actually be quite easily done by monitoring the, if I switch the ignition back on again, I can monitor the amp meter here. So with the ignition in the on position now, I can see currently at the moment that the coil must be disconnected. Because I have to wait for the pumps to stop running, if you still have manual pumps. If I retire the ignition system, there we go, that is where the coil is connected. So the points must be closed at that point. If I gradually advance the ignition quadrant, I see the points open there. I'll just move them back again. So that is the point at which the points are opening, and that is where my spark occurs. Now that should be, that could coincide with my timing mark, and it should be when the uh, quadrant on here is set to early or fully advanced. But you can see it's uh, it's a little bit out. It's in the middle of the word ignition, so it um, it should be a little bit further around. Um, but I'm actually going to live with that with that small amount. If I needed to alter it, what I would do is come back out, hopefully bring the inspection lamp again. Um, and on the distributor, I would uh, slacken off the uh, screw that holds the cam in place, um, lift the cam up off the taper and move the cam round uh, in order to correct the timing. So that is how you can check the ignition timing on uh, a 2530. And thanks for watching.